Hi guys, I had done a video a while back on how to configure your Cisco router as a DHCP server. Recently someone asked me in the comment section of that video how you would configure DHCP if you had multiple VLANs involved. In response to that question I decided to go ahead and do another video to explain that. This tutorial will assume you already know how to configure VLANs and how to configure router on a stick to route traffic between those VLANs. If you do not already know how to configure VLANs or router on a stick, look in the description below for links to the videos explaining those. There will also be a link to the original video on configuring DHCP on a router. If there are any generic details about DHCP that I leave out here, you may find them in that video, but I'm going to try to cover um, most of that information here. So in this example, we have three VLANs. We have VLAN 10, which is on subnet 192.168.10.0. We have v VLAN 20, which is 192.168.20.0 and VLAN 30, which is on subnet 192.168.30.0. Um, as you already probably know, um, the VLAN number here does not have to match the subnet number here. We just do that to make everything a little more clear. So routing between VLANs is accomplished through router 1, which is configured with router on a stick. So the for VLAN 10 to be able to communicate with something on VLAN 20 or VLAN 30, it has to go to the router and then the router can route that information to VLAN 20 or VLAN 30. Now currently our PCs are configured with static addresses and I left them that way just to show you that the VLANs are configured and our router is properly routing traffic between VLANs. So let's just take a look at PC1 it's got a static address of 10.10 .10. and then we've got PC3 over here which has got a static address of 30.30 .30. so let's uh, just make sure I'm gonna ping 192.168.30.30 .30. if I can get there then our routing between VLANs is working properly. So for right now we're going to leave our PCs set with static addresses. Now let's take a look at what we're trying to accomplish. We have three VLANs and we want router 1 to give out the IP address, default gateway, and DNS server information to the clients on each of those VLANs. So for all of the VLANs they're going to get the same IP address 10.1.1.1 for the DNS server address. For VLAN 10, the range of IP addresses that it's going to give out are 10.11 through 10.254 and a default gateway address is going to be 10.1. For VLAN 20, we're going to get a range of 20.11 through 20.254 and default gateway of 20.1 and for VLAN 30, you probably already guessed it, we're going to get a range of 30.11 through 30.254 with 30.1 as our default gateway. Now based on these ranges you can see that we have decided to exclude the first 10 addresses from each network from DHCP and the reason we do that is for any devices that may be set with static addresses on those networks such as our router which is configured with 10.1, 20.1, and 30.1 because it's our default gateway for all three of those VLANs. We don't want our PC getting 10.1 as an address if router 1 already has the IP address 10.1. So um, let's go ahead and look at our router here. And let me expand this window out a bit so it makes it easier to see everything. The first thing you need to know is that by default, the DHCP server service is running on a Cisco router. So I'm going to go into global configuration mode. Um, there could be an issue with if you've got your DHCP service on by default, 
and you start configuring DHCP pools, your IP or your DHCP server could start giving out IP addresses that you don't want it to give out. You know, we mentioned earlier we want to exclude the first 10 IP addresses. Well, if we start configuring our DHCP pool, it's going to start out giving out IP addresses. And if we haven't excluded any addresses yet, it could give out something we don't want it to give out. Um, so there are three different things we could do here. The first is we could just disable our DHCP service. And the way you would do that is say no service DHCP. Now that's not the preferable method um, to do this. The reason being is your router could already be a DHCP server. Say it's already got 20 different VLANs it's given out IP addresses for and you're just adding VLAN 10. Well, if this is a router in production that is giving out IP addresses, you don't want to turn off the service because it's giving out IP addresses. So we're going to turn our service back on here with the command service DHCP. So if we don't want to disable the DHCP service, then what do we want to do? Well, let's, another thing we could do is we could just make sure all of our DHCP clients on VLAN 10 are turned off or that they have DHCP disabled. Um, that is another way you could do it, but that's not a practical approach either because in reality, you're not going to have a network with one PC on it. You're probably going to have a network with, you know, 10, 50, 100, 200 PCs. You know, who knows? And you, you don't want to take the time to go to every one of those and make sure it's turned off or the DHCP is disabled. And even if you did have the time to do that, um, you're probably going to miss one here or there and that could cause problems. So if we can't do either, either of those things, what are we going to do? Well, what we'll do is we'll configure our excluded addresses first. And you do that from global configuration mode. So let's look at the command. The command is IP DHCP excluded dash address. Now you could exclude one address by just giving the IP 10.1. That would exclude just that IP address. But if you do that address with a space and then put the last address in the range you want to exclude, that will exclude everything between 1 and 10. So that's taking care of one of the goals we're trying to accomplish, which is exclude the first 10 addresses in VLAN 10 or subnet 10. So let's do the same thing again. This time we're excluding the first 10 addresses in subnet 20. And once again, we'll use this command to exclude the first 10 IP addresses in subnet 30. So none of the addresses in these three ranges will be given out by your DHCP server. <coughs> so now let's define our DHCP pool for each VLAN. And the command to do that is IP, also from global configuration mode, IP DHCP pool and then let's just hit the question mark here you want to give it a name so our name can be anything I could call it Fred but I'm gonna call it VLAN 10 to make it descriptive when I hit enter there you can see it my prompt changed to DHCP dash config to put me in DHCP configuration mode for VLAN 10 when you're there, you want to define your network. So our subnet for VLAN 10 is 192.168.10.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Now we also need our router to give out a default gateway address. So 
default dash and you're probably guessing I'm going to type gateway but it's actually default dash router and 10.1 is the address we want to give out and then lastly we want to give out a DNS server and we had decided that 10.1.1.1 was the DNS server that's serving all of our VLANs. So we are done configuring the pool for VLAN 10. So let's go to the PC that's here on VLAN 10. We had it set with a static address and we are going to change it to DHCP. We excluded the first 10 addresses, so we would expect our first address would be 192.168.10.11. So let's see what happens when we change to DHCP. And there you go, we got 10.11. And our default gateway is 10.1. So that worked as expected. Let's go back to our router, and now we're going to hit exit to go back to global config mode, and then I'm going to type IP DHCP pool. We're going to conf uh, configure the pool for VLAN 20. So I'm just going to give it the name VLAN 20 to be descriptive. We want to define our network. So our subnet for VLAN 20 is 192.168.20.0. And you have to put your subnet mask. We need to give out a default gateway address the command default dash router and it's going to be 192.168.20.1 and give out that DNS server address and then I'll exit out of there and we're going to go look at the PC that's on VLAN 20 And it got 20.11, so we got the first IP address in the pool because we excluded the first 10 addresses in the range. And last thing we need to do is configure the DHCP pool for VLAN 30. And remember, that's just a name, VLAN 30. I could call it anything find the network. Subnet is 30.0 for VLAN 30. Default dash router is 192.168.30.1 and our DNS dash server 10.1.1.1. All right, let's go to PC3 and we're going to change to static and we're hoping it's going to be dot .11 and it is. Now it doesn't have to be dot .11, it can give out anything in our range but since it hasn't given out any other IP addresses we would assume it would get 11. And it got out the right default gateway and it gave out the right DNS server address. So now I'm going to go back here see if I can ping something in VLAN 10, which was 10.11. There you have it. All right, so that's it. Um, it's, it's really not a lot different than configuring it without VLANs. Um, but I hope this video was informative. If it was, uh, please click on the thumbs up on the video or subscribe to the channel. Thanks.